Crop Talk on Market Journal is supported by Nebraska's soybean farmers and their checkoff. Well, when planting winds down, we'll soon be turning our focus over to seedling plants as they emerge. Seedling diseases are a cause for concern this time of the year. These diseases can be caused by several common, common soil-borne organisms and can often be difficult to diagnose. We recently caught up with Nebraska Extension plant pathologist Tamara Jackson Zims to learn more about what corn seedling diseases producers should be keeping an eye on. It's good to see some corn emerging from the ground, but that's why I brought you in to talk about some of the potential <laughs> challenges when corn is emerging, particularly in wet conditions. There are some challenges that producers should be keeping an eye out for. What are those? Well, that's for sure. You know, there's always something that can go wrong. We don't want them to, but anytime we have any kind of stress on those plants, uh, even in the very beginning seedlings, we can see some potential seedling diseases in uh, both corn and soybean. And I, I just want to focus on corn today with you. And there's there's a handful of diseases that can occur. There's some that are much more common, things caused by, you know, uh, Pythium, Rhizoctonia, Fusarium. And a lot of this depends on the conditions that we plant into or what happens immediately afterwards. And so uh, we know seed doesn't germinate until you're 50 degrees or higher. And so really cool wet soils are especially uh, at risk for having some of these seedling diseases in corn. And so whatever you can do to avoid that um, or giving plants the opportunity to germinate and emerge as quickly as they can helps you outrun those types of things. Well, we do know some producers this past year did plant in that, those conditions you're talking about, cool and wet, just due to the timing of things. So what should they be looking out for? What are some signs that they might have some diseases popping up? You know, the first thing they might notice is they may notice they've got skips or plants that did not emerge. And there's a lot of things that can go wrong under, you know, under the soil line. And uh, often we'll have seed decay uh, or rotten seed or, or seedlings that can happen before or after they emerge. And so it may require you to, to get in there and dig around a little bit and see what you find. Because there's a lot of things, of course, that can that can keep a plant from emerging. It could be an insect issue or something else. But, you know, if those are impacted by a seedling disease, a fungus, for instance, they're gonna be very brittle. They might be mushy and rotten and hard to find too, or they'll fall apart before you, before you can get them pulled out and get a good look at them. You know, you can always have those plants sent to the plant and pest diagnostic clinic to find out uh, which pathogen was at work or maybe multiple ones. But the reality is often the conditions that led to the problem, they may pass by the time you may consider if you needed to replant or not. And so uh, I guess the other thing to consider too is that practically all of our, of our hybrid dent corn seed is treated with a cocktail of often four or five fungicides that do a really good job. Sometimes, um, a nematicide too, uh, usually even an insecticide. They don't completely eliminate the risk of a seedling disease though. They, they may help reduce that risk though, that threat. I'm glad you brought up some of the management after this. We'll, we, we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second, but I was curious, is this something when you're out walking around in a field, is it gonna be pretty isolated perhaps to some of those most wet spots mm -hmm. in the field or is it gonna be uh, something that you might see mm -hmm. more widespread? Well, that's you're right, that's often the case. And so if you've got a place in the field that maybe doesn't drain very well, you get some ponding sometimes, it stays wetter a little longer, maybe that's at higher risk. Um, that's, that's certainly the case, but even, even outside of that, sometimes just individual plants you'll see may, may look a little, uh, a little poor, they may be stunted or discolored. Uh, sometimes they'll recover from that, they may not die and melt down. And uh, those plants that recover, sometimes they may actually succumb to a different problem later on in the season. And so uh, that's something to keep in mind too, whether it's a stalk rot or maybe crown rot later on. So back to uh, the management of this, if someone walks out there, man, this is a really bad issue, usually replant might not be the best uh, case scenario as you mentioned, but what are our options? Well, replanting, of course, it could be an option mm -hmm. for you, but you, you'd really wanna consider that really closely and check out the recommendations from Nebraska Extension on how to decide economically if that's worth your while and how late you can plant. 
uh, often the conditions have changed and that same problem may not be an issue again. I think I would keep track of which fields may have been impacted though, and especially if you have those low wet areas that may be repeatedly impacted, you may have something really specific out there and maybe there's something else you can do later, maybe as simple as waiting until the end to plant that field and maybe it'll give it a chance to warm up, allow those seedlings to emerge faster and outrun the problem. They could even further down the road, maybe some tile drain and some field work uh, later in the year too. It could be. When it's so dry, it's hard to think about that, <laughs> but sure. <laughs> Tamara, will you give me the final word on this topic this week. What else would you like to share with our viewers? Well, I, I, you know, we don't see ceiling diseases every year, but this is something to watch for. Look for skips in your stand, and uh, there's lots of things too that we'll watch for later on in the season. That is Tamara Jackson-Zams joining us on this week's Crop Talk.